Would anyone else like to take the intro today? <clears throat> Emma, why don't you do it? It's been a while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if hey I could there. imitate your voice, I'd do it. <laughs> oh, hey there. Welcome to Motorcycles and Misfits, coming to you from the Recycle Garage in Sunny, Marina, California, USA. We have an action-packed show tonight. It's a cornucopia of goodness. And starring with us is myself. I'm Emma. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Also in the studio tonight is Liza. Hello. <laughs> also coming from his luxury abode in Auburn, California, is Rick, yeah? Hey. <laughs> well, hello. How are um, you doing, Emma? Oh, I'm absolutely wonderful, darling. Coming from his luxury penthouse in... Oregon, USA, is Bagler. Greetings and salivations. Oh, yes, lots of salivations. And mm -hmm. finally, by no means least, coming from his luxury garage in Santa Cruz, California, <laughs> it's Jim. Hello. Oh, hello, darling. <laughs> hello. You meet the nicest people on a Honda. <laughs> I was having a stroke. That was my stroke accent. You meet the nicest people when you're bonking. <laughs> oh, hello. Well, thank you so much for that intro, Emma. You made it so much more special. Oh, you've got to class it up, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, every now and then you got to do that. Um, I wanted to... You know, um, I think tonight we're going to have a, a fun show. We've had such a great weekend, and and what I wanted to say is there's so many things happening right now in this weekend that give me hope. And I think for a lot of people, there's hope out there. Um, one of them is it's finally warmed up in Texas. Yeah. And, yes. Uh, I, I'm so glad because it's it's been horrible seeing what's happening there. To anyone in Texas, um, you know, my heart goes out to you. You know, um, our listener mm. Sheila in Texas sent us an email, and she um, she shared with us what she's been going through. Mm. She actually kind of moved in with her neighbors because they had firewood and oh, wow. why heat two houses, and they also had a pool, so they've been able to pull water uh, for the toilet out of the pool. And she said they were. Like burning like 80 logs a day, and her job was to stay up through the night, <clears throat> keep the fire going. Um, and just all the different neighbors pulling stuff together, and like she using the, the propane from her barbecue grill, which there was no more propane left. So you're like scavenging stuff, like all the neighbors coming together and helping. And, and um, it was really heartbreaking here. But I heard today that. It warmed up. It's gotten warm there. So aside I got from a house out there still, and I keep checking in on the weather report and everything. And yeah, like sixteen degrees. I think they saw sixty four today where they were in East Texas. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I know a lot of people don't still don't have power or water or stuff. I mean, really, what's been going on there reminded me a lot of Hurricane Katrina in the same yeah. kind of yeah. People being stranded, helping each other out. You know, like what do you do? It was horrible. So. There's hope. Um, another thing that really gave me hope is, you know, we lifted the kind of restriction on people coming to the garage. You know, we were just doing appointment only and just <clears throat> Emma and I are helping a few. And I didn't even like put out the word really just like, hey, you can come now. We had a full house today. Wow. It was like Charlie and Micah and Jeremy and Henry and Adrian and like a bunch of other people, like people I don't know. Uh, Goldwing, Gary, like all the old usuals, everyone just kind of showed up and we had a fun festive day. But what was best about it? I mean, we're all kind of getting used to living with the pandemic now. And we didn't have to yell at anybody for getting too close or crowding somebody or parading around without a mask on. You know, everybody was really mellow about it. They knew what they had to do. It was just, it was a great day. Yeah. And in fact, Excellent. I got to uh, 
sport my new mask thanks to jim what do you guys think oh, <laughs> oh now you're a definite Masking. you're a totally un- yeah you that's like your it? uncle that's your uncle liza mask <laughs> awesome that's right bagel that I is full uncle liza i was freaking emma out does that look like a spank harder? Is... <laughs> yeah, that's great. Does it I make think... you spank harder or does it make you take more spanking? <laughs> and I can make it talk, see? It, it looks even worse on camera because it actually it matches your skin tone better because in the flesh, Lysa's is quite fleshy color. And the mask is and the mask is very pink. <laughs> But for, on the for, camera, I love that know, type I, of illusion. You know, I, I took a good, picture right? earlier today. Somebody gave us a bunch of Easy Riders, and I <laughs> found a sweet picture of um, <laughs> the top of a lady. And uh, yeah, similarly, but I like your mask much more. Well, I told someone today, if, if, if you don't think I like Liza, I rode all the way through the desert, haphazardly went, found the, the, the uh, hammer town, uh, King of the Hammers, braved that whole thing just to go get that mask for her Ooh, nice true trophy <laughs> and, and for those who are listening it is it is a mask of a very with a very bushy fu manchu style mustache on a, on a very uh, gruff looking biker type <laughs> there was a red white and blue ish to it i think wasn't there oh uh, yeah well it's actually uh michael kudlitz from walking dead with oh, his okay. big Fu Manchu thing, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So the big redheaded dude from Walking yeah. Dead with the with that biker yeah. mustache. Yeah, it's who his lower beat face. his head in with a hammer. Yeah, that one. Oh, um, <laughs> it's very troubling. Um, it really going, is extremely troubling. Going back <laughs> though, it was a great day, and like I said, it gave me a lot of hope. It gave me a hope that things aren't normal yet, but they're definitely getting back. They're well, you know what, closer. I. I I thought was really normal <laughs> and, and yesterday as we did that ride out to Hollister and we stopped at that restaurant in Trace Pinos, uh, whatever it is, the 19th hole or something, which is, can be a bikery place being in Hollister, big kind of Harley hangout sometimes. We rolled in right before they opened. So there was no one there, but they had outdoor seating. We were masked more or less, you know, coming and going. And then like on cue, like how many, like 20 Harleys rolled up, <laughs> yeah. you know, a big old like just pack of harleys and everybody they're backing in making a ton of noise but when they got off they wore their masks they were socially distanced it was cool so it was like something like a new normal where we can go out do group rides run across other group of motorcyclists but you don't feel you know threatened or, or worried about the behavior of people it was really nice well what i thought was funny is that it was us on our adventure bikes and emma on her beloved sport bike a group a, you know a club of harley and then on the other porch was a porsche club <laughs> what a motley and us in the wow. middle it was just like, hey. <laughs> we, we were the was meat out. we were the meat in the sandwich darling <laughs> so um i wanted to get to we have a lot of news and and we don't normally share news that much because there's so many other places covering it but i think that this is all worthy and it kind of relates to stuff that we've talked about not too long ago one of them is buell is back baby did you guys see the news well you you just you just hold on there like (laughs) kind of sort of maybe no yeah Uh, yeah, no you you just hold on because that's a pretty bold statement and buell and i mean let's be honest with you britain have two things in common is they're both inextricably linked with their founder and creator. And Eric Buell has nothing to do with this company. Now, it might not always be that way. You know, he may get to buy into it in the future, but the Buell that's being introduced is nothing to do with Eric Buell. Is that correct? Yes and no. <clears throat> So um, they're going to be bringing it. All right. So just to go back. So there were two Buell brands. If you remember, there was Buell Motorcycles and then there was EBR, right? Eric Buell mm-hmm. Racing. So when everything kind of fell apart, um, this, these investors bought EBR and have been sitting on it. Well, this last year, the same people bought Buell Motorcycles. So it's all under one roof now. And they're going to be um, bringing out Buell motorcycles, having parts available, supporting Buell, all of that. Um, 
in addition, in 2024, they're going to be launching more new bikes, um, getting into dirt and adventure and all the things. Um, but I think this is all still very much based upon the style and engineering that Buell founded. Right? Right. Wow. Yeah. So, this, yeah, so, so, so they're supporting... So they're, they're supporting the older bikes then, you're saying? Yep. Um, cool. Yeah. So and it looked like they were going to come out with a bunch of models potentially too. Not like just a couple, but a whole well, lineup. So okay. based on the uh, the 1190 platform that he had? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I love that they're doing a little bit of everything and um, getting, you know, the dirt and like they're diversifying. He, he, yeah, Buell did. He had an adventure bike. Was right. it the Ulysses, right? Um, yeah so but okay. they're going to continue doing that and and this is just going to be yet another american brand and we're going to see life breathe back in because so many people love their buell, motor, buell motorcycles uh and their ebrs and those are going to be supported once again right i'm not um, going to get too excited right now about all these models that are promised i mean bear in mind these are investors that are talking right now so they're going to promise they're going to promise everything you know, it's a bit like a political promise. They promise everything, but the reality is, you know, they'll probably have to ratchet it back. As be as beloved as Buell's were, they were never a volume motorcycle, even right. when they were in their heyday. Right, Rick? No, I wouldn't say so. No, yeah. it was it was a niche. You know, it was a, a, the performance crowd wanted it. Right, and that exactly. Wasn't the general Harley character. So they're not going to sell a gazillion of them. But it's overall, it's great news. I mean, um, they are going to be uh, present at Daytona Bike Week at the JMP Cycles Destination Daytona Mega Store. And they've launched a new website. You can go to BuellMotorcycle.com and you can see I'm a lot of these. Going models. there right now. Going there right now. Diving. Um, other exciting news. Do you guys remember when we had uh, Melissa Paris on the show? And yep. talked about the racing she was doing with Royal Enfield. You yeah, Royal that? Enfield. So Royal Enfield started a program. Uh, it's called uh, BTR, which is Build, Train, Race. And it's a program for women riders to get them into racing, where you take these bikes and you build them out into race bikes. Well, Moto America has signed them up, and they're going to be featuring them at some of their races. And Melissa Paris is going to be the mentor in the program and assisting all these women in building their race bikes. Fantastic. Yeah, she Isn't that cool? With the wild suspension, that front end. And yeah, she got down on that mm -hmm. one for sure. Yeah, uh, they are going to be racing at uh, Brainerd, Minnesota, um, at the Pittsburgh um, International Race Complex. And at Barber Motorsports and at Road Atlanta is where you will be seeing the is BTR, Build Train Race Program. So look for that and look for Melissa. And, you know, oh, bloody hell. I just went onto the, uh, I just went onto the Buell website and the Hammerhead 1190RX, it's, it's quite an impressive looking thing. Um, it's a computer rendering, alas. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like to see something that's a bit more realistic. Um, it's got almost like a lightning look about it. Um, it's very aggressive. It's very aggressive looking bike. It's very hammerhead. <laughs> well, it's it's a sport bike. I mean, in every sense of the in. Yeah. Oh, there's a silver one, which is. I'm looking at it right now too. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Cool. Um. You know, I've got. I'm. I'm really quite cynical. I have a deep distrust of computer renderings, because sure. if I mean, if you're doing a big song and dance about a bike that you are actually going to build, take a picture of picture of a fucking bike. <laughs> you know, so we can actually say, oh yes, it exists. Hard um, to believe a rendering. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, anybody can do them. Um, right, that's that's no different than the promise that they're making right now, right? Right, exactly. But yeah. how, you know. We'll give right. them their due. It's but, a great looking bike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it could be well, promising. And uh, in, I saved the biggest news for last. And this one is exciting and it falls back into the whole theme of hope. There is hope. 
So, um, uh, Jim and I and Emma and Michael went for a ride yesterday. Yes, we did. And on this ride, as we were coming up to a group of three Harleys, they waved first. <laughs> oh. And I was like, what, what, what? And I was, wow, that's like, it gave me hope. But, but Liza, mm -hmm. to, 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 be, to be clear, though, they did not know it was you. <laughs> it was shocking. Flagging it was shocking. Air facility, maybe. Huh? Well, you know, were they lost in flagging a repair facility? Maybe I don't know, but it was like it was nice. It was like you know, there were. Yeah. All I think right everybody was. Again, you know, I think yeah. everybody was happy to be out. I went for a lot of riding up a uh, Friday up through the mountains, and there were a bunch of people yeah. out, even though the weather was crappy. Everybody was out having a good time, and I think they just got caught up in the moment. But, and then I remembered, so my general rule is is just never wave at him anyway. And it's my favorite is when Harley people actually wave to you, and, and you just straight up ignore them anyway. Uh, but then I got – Liza gave me a hard time last time I did that. So, yes, we yeah. did return the wave to the waving Harleys. It was a moment. I, the, the, my, <laughs> the people that give the thumbs down, that's the one I've seen a oh. couple of times. Oh, I've gotten that on the scooter plenty of times. Yeah, and I'm just <laughs> oh, okay. Usually, Ouch. usually from Harley riders. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and little kids. I was like, that's a little rough. Come on. No, the kids love the scooters. <laughs> they always wave at you. I don't know. I saw that video. <laughs> the scooter release. Come on. So, I mean, let's play devil's advocate here. Who do you think are the worst offenders? So, here we go. Let's oh. throw some categories out there. And no. you know me, I try to stay away from controversial subjects, but sure. I don't mind throwing a grenade in here and <laughs> setting it off and running away. Emma, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. So here's some categories for you. There are sport bike riders, Ducati riders, and we'll break that down into a subdivision of multistrada riders. <laughs> oh. Yes, BM, yep, BM, that, you, that's a stop right there. <laughs> BMW riders or Harley oh. riders. Who do you think are the worst offenders? Actually, you, there's a group you left out. Oh, God, KTM people? No. <laughs> Choppers, because they're just holding on for dear life. For, well, they, they couldn't dare count. take their hands off. You, got, yeah. you need those hands, you know? You need those <laughs> hands, I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. Who do you think are the worst offenders? Let me tell you well, who's the worst for me. And I've mentioned this before. The one that drives me nuts the most is if a scooterist does not wave at me, I have been snubbed. Like, I feel <laughs> oh, tilted. Like, who the fuck are you, man? Well, that's because, Liza, nobody's waved to them. They don't know. <laughs> they never got the memo. <laughs> PTSD. Now, I will say that, that I have found that BMW riders consistently almost almost always will not wave, at least not to me. But maybe that's because I'm a scooter. I don't know. <laughs> well, here's the other thing you have to keep in mind that a lot of sport bike riders are actually waving, but you don't know because it's it's a <laughs> the down low you, finger it's flip. It's down low. Yeah. Yeah. It's just sometimes just like the pinky is out, like <laughs> or they uh, kick their leg out. So you, and so, you know, Rick, I don't know if you know, I have every time I pass another bike, I have a waving contest, see who wins. It's kind of like Rochambeau. <laughs> and in my contest is whoever's hand is lower wins. Okay. Right? <laughs> they don't know I'm, I'm in a competition, <laughs> but I am. Yeah. I my, and like, you'll get the Jixer guys, they beat me every time because they're like just dragging their hand Dragon on the knuckle. pavement. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, shoot, you win. Like, they know about the competition. They do. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's 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 definitely a thing. I, you know, Bagel just dropped one too to throw a curveball. The leg wave. Yeah, you know, I've no. Definitely... That means dead squirrel. Well, <laughs> it could, but but having having no. ridden in Europe, that's that's how people wave in Europe. They, they I've seen they other people do this. It's no, they don't. Well, they did in France when I was riding there. No, it, wait, shaking your leg around means something else in France, darling. Oh, what does it mean? <laughs> I'm not going to say. They're empty in the Me. catheter. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's <laughs> basically no. It. It's, em it's 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 evacuating the colostomy. Oh, so so you're saying I? They, they, so what they were really saying was, oh, I piss on your scooter. 
Oh, worse, darling. <laughs> Piss on you. <laughs> no, no, worse than piss. Oh, really? Oh, oh yes. The, the other colostomy. <laughs> yes. Oh. Beautiful now. time to clear the line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I thought, and I thought they were so friendly out in the French countryside. <laughs> well, now you know better. You Quit see, following the, them, too. The, the, the ones who have it really tough, the ones who... Are, can somebody do a violin noise? Can so, do, so um, the poor British bikers, those, those, yeah, those guys, those poor British bikers, because you can't wave to somebody because you're taking your hand off the throttle side. Uh, yeah. And if you're giving it the beans, you have a choice between waving at the guy coming towards you or losing beans. Never drop and, beans. Oh, yeah. And if you drop your beans halfway through a ride, it's simply not on the cards. But, I mean, no, you've, you got to, you've got to keep the beans engaged. So, you know, there's all kinds of interesting sort of nods going on and sort of waving across and like, hello. That's interesting. Yeah, because when I rode in Scotland, I'm like waving, hey, just doing my best, and nobody <laughs> waved. And I'm like, what a bunch of jerks. But No, that it's not because... <laughs> But every time you wait, they don't want to drop their beans. You were right? losing beans, right? Right. Uh, I, like, yeah, I, was, I lost plenty of things on those rides. If you're waiting we're with the hand closed closed with courtesy. You know, um, when it, we've got listeners in England and we've got listeners in Australia. And I mean, you know, I'm 25 years out of date at, wave, uh, at waving at people in England. So and I'd be interested, uh, English friends and our Australian chums. You know, what's the wave? Is it the simple nod or do you do a cross wave? And or is it the dead squirrel foot the, shake? Yeah, full catheter fling. Right. <laughs> but you know, you know, back back in the 70s, the chances are you were on a big two-stroke anyway. So you're sitting, you're riding your GT 550. And, you know, you wave at somebody. It's, and now you, you, there's no point just winding it on again. You know, you've got to go down through the, through the transmission. You got to get it up in the power band again. So there's some real work going on to wave at somebody. So it's easy just not to hmm. just so, nod, at, nod at them. In other news, I dropped a little teaser on our Facebook page. I don't know if you guys saw it. The uh, evil Knievel commercial. Did you guys see it? No. I oh, it's so good. You got to go in there. It <laughs> was for some of the evil Knievel, like toys like bicycles and stuff and it's like evil being a cool and it's like because i'm evil what can evil <laughs> <laughs> it was like, they had like some choir music or something wow that's great <laughs> yeah it was really great um but we have a new contest that we're about to do and i'm announcing it right now so pay attention everyone beep, 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 beep. you can win a new Evil Knievel stunt cycle. That's right. Nice. I'm holding in my hand the newest version. This is not the original one that we gave out. You guys remember we gave out a bunch? Well, I have yeah. uh, three to give away. And we're going to do one contest. And top three winners will win them. This is the brand new trail bike edition from california creations nice, nice. yes it's really right. cool if you guys have not gotten this yet uh you need to go uh either enter this or go to evil knievel toys online hopefully it has the patented flywheel um <laughs> it does so emma yes darling you helped me come up with the criteria last time we did trivia and it's really hard to do um trivia because people can find the answers to anything so we came up with a contest. Well, there's, gonna... a, there's a contest within a contest. <laughs> okay. Is this contestception or something? <laughs> well, you, ju you just hold on there, mister, because this is, this is a wonderful thing. Can I, can I announce the criteria? Yeah, you came yeah, up with it. People are going to sure. earn. You're going to earn this prize. You yeah. are going to earn this prize, but it, it is going to be worth it. Um, so what, in order to win the trail bike, which is brand new from California Creations. And if you remember, we interviewed mm -hmm. the guy. Um, I can't remember what episode it was. I know Liza's got a photographic thing. He's a very, very solid guy. He's a toy maker to the core. The, to the core, mm -hmm. these are legit toys. 
In order to win this, you need to write a poem or a song lyric with Knievel and rhyme it. Wow. Oh, yeah. There once was a man named Evil. And Evil does not really rhyme with Knievel because that's his name. So get creative, get thinking. But here's the competition within a competition. If you come up with something worthwhile and it's a song, if you want to come on the show and sing it, <laughs> we're going to give you something else. Wait. Do we know what that something else is? It's going to be good. Okay, we're working on it. I don't... Oh. We're working on what we're going to give you, but... You know, we've got okay. loyal listeners. They've been with us for a while, and they should know by now, if we say we're going to give you something good, it's going to be something really good. Oh, is it your uh, pin-up uh, pin shoot? Or is that the, 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 the completely naked one? Yeah. Polaroids for the OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more like soiled pantaloons. <laughs> Oh, no. Emma's <laughs> post Vindaloo pantaloon. Post Vindaloo Vindaloons. Oh. oh my lord. Now we are gonna oh. give you if you come up with the song of songs that will really reduce the audience to a tear and wanna come on this show and sing it in your own voice. We're going to give you something really, really good. And and we don't know what alley. it is yet, but I promise you it's going to be really, really good. All right. And uh, just to clarify some of the things, because everyone listening is a misfit, I am going to say, other than myself and Emma, who created this contest, all misfits are eligible. Absolutely. I know you've got your guitar there. So Rick's like, hmm. So here's the deal. Poem. Come up with a, a poem and or haiku. Song, haiku, anything. And... Put it in a file and send it to recycle motorcycle garage at gmail.com with the title of Evil Contest. And Emma and I are going to review them and judge them. We're going to pick the top three. And the top three will each get a stunt cycle and we'll pad it with some little extra stuff. Maybe one of Emma's squirrel covers, something like that. Yeah. And the, um, if you want to just add and you can put it in red ink, whatever. I will sing this with your oh, submission. <laughs> I will sing this. Then we're going to put it in the separate drawer for the prize amongst prizes. Now, this prize is going to put you in the next tax bracket. I guarantee it. <laughs> I mean, you're you're going to have to file this on your ten ninety nine. Um, so it's it's going to be worthwhile. And I'm going to say that we're going to give everyone uh, till. March 7th. So two weeks. March oh, 7th is the deadline. Uh, March 7 at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time so that we'll be able to pick a winner. How about that? Um, nice. So the Elton Johns, the Leonard Cohens, you know, the <laughs> Dylan Thomases amongst us. Now, Emma, do they get extra points if they have more cowbell? You know, you always need more cowbell. Yeah, there you Always go. need more cowbell. No shake. points, but I think it gains credibility. I mean, if what? somebody wants to come on the show and sing it with cowbell. Yeah. I personally like some of the good beat I can dance to. Yeah, exactly. A bit of toe tapping. What is a song without cowbell? Really? Right. <laughs> it's Story nothing, fooling. Rick. It's nothing. Very fooling. Come on. Come on. Exactly. No, can I, we do I mean, a, can can we add performance art in there? I'm kind of thinking a little uh, a little GG Allen. Uh, yeah, my, my no. However you want. I mean, at the Dude, end if you don't know who GG Allen is, do not Google it. Uh, <laughs> that's the everybody. Let me spare waffle, you. Right. Let me spare you. At the end of the day, <laughs> this is highbrow entertainment. This is highbrow entertainment, and I when? expect oh. each and every one of you to treat it that way. Are you listening to me at home? This is highbrow entertainment. I expect a quality poem or a haiku or a song, a ditty, a limerick, whatever. And here's an, here's an Miss Emma top tip. Rhyming Knievel may be a tough task. 
So we may cut you some slack and just let you rhyme it with ill. No. <laughs> Come on. You know, no, I mean, you know, if it's good Free, enough. Extra points for creativity. Let's just say that. You yeah, know, like this is a, this is a you very sliding okay. scale. It's a very sliding scale, but it's your time to shine. It's your time to get what may be the greatest toy on earth. There's a question yeah. from the floor, Jim. Yes, possibly if I actually dressed like Evil Can Evil during my performance, could that add to the uh, you know? I think my, that would add. I think that there. would add to the entertainment. Now wait, okay, I'm going to be the, gonna, the angry old one. As Evil Can Evil. <laughs> What's that? For, what if I undressed as Evil Knievel for the performance? Yeah, I think that would be classed as entertainment. Great okay. ideas. Okay. Great these ideas. Are, these are fantastic ideas. And Jim, can we collaborate? I have enough yes. thinking. You know, it's excellent. I secretly hope one of the studio misfits doesn't win. I really want a misfit <laughs> at home. I want somebody in, you know, Kentucky who's listening, or maybe even Australia or England to be excited about this and say, I'm going to win this and come up with something creative. And be good. it's your chance to shine. You could become a legend for yards around. <laughs> you could be a legend in your own lunchtime and we're going to make it happen <laughs> and give you things. We're going to give you things. Just well. ask us. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. Uh, and, Emma, before oh, we... Oh, go ahead. Also, one more thing I wanted to mention on the Evil Knievel subject. Because mm -hmm. uh, I just went on their website to check out what they've got. They also okay. have... Uh, and I hadn't seen this before. I don't know if this is new or not. But they have an Evil Knievel stow-and-go ramp. Yes, the ramp so is that nice. you can, Right, so you can launch your Evil Knievel stunt cycle into the air. Yes. Like it should be. Yeah, they're actually going to be coming out with more of the toys. So I'm looking forward to see what else they come out with. Um, Emma, before we move on to the next, uh, can you please remove your left earring? Oh. Yes, it makes quite the bit of rattling. Clankety, clankety, clank. Thank you. Um, so I had an idea to try a, a new segment um, that's kind of a, a, it's a joining of a lot of different things we've done. So, you know, it's, it's been a while since we did uh, um, get to know Miss Emma. And I thought, you know what? Every time Hello. I hang out with her, I get to know her a little bit better. And there's a lot of fascinating things about her. But also her depth <laughs> of knowledge is amazing. So I thought we'd do a little segment called Ask Miss Emma Anything, where we can get to know her, but also get to know the depth of her knowledge, right? So, well, it's better um, than the depths of my depravity, darling. So, um, I want to see do any of the misfits have a ask Miss Emma anything question? No. I have a, a question that might right, stump Bagel, let's Miss go Emma. Yeah. Uh, the first production Vespa had what size CC engine? Mm. Oh, god, Good question. <laughs> it this was. was like, 1946. It was bigger than 50. Yes, it was. Because 50 cc engines didn't produce enough power. Yep. I think, wasn't it something like 98 cc or something? Bingo. You got wow! it. Boom. <laughs> On the <have> money. <laughs> to the cc. Yes. Wow. Well, well done. done. She, and just Thank so you. everyone knows, Emma is not prepared. She did not know this. We are making this up. I'm looking um, at stuff on Craigslist right now. I'm, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, used Harley Davidson's on Craigslist. Right. So I'm multitasking. Ooh, Harley. careful. And I have some uh, <laughs> listeners have sent in some questions. Uh, this one <laughs> yes. is from Tom in Portland. Hello, Tom. I don't know which Portland that is. Um, oh, Portland. He says, in a pinch... Can you use maple syrup instead of oil? Roses are red, violets are purple. You can't use treacle or any kind of syrup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so, you. Don't, I don't think that would end well. <laughs> so, um, there's this marvelous story. There's this... There's, there's this marvelous story of a guy who was actually riding a Triumph Trident out in Africa and he hit a rock and smashed the transmission. 
And all he had was bananas, and he stuck a load of bananas in the transmission, and it got him home. And it did. Wow. It really happened. However, a transmission ain't an engine. Yes. And, you know, a transmission, all it basically needs is a means of lubrication with the gears meshing together, and it can all get flung around. An engine actually produces pressure, and a lot of things like the camshaft, and to a certain extent, the older shell type cam sh uh, crankshaft in an engine needs pressure. So, no, sorry, darling, maple syrup ain't going to cut it. Um, but it'll sure smell good before it blows it up. Yeah, caramelize yeah. your pistons. Right? <laughs> Glaze your <laughs> cylinder walls. <laughs> yeah, I good. want my cylinder block glazed. <laughs> okay, I got a question for Miss Simma. Okay. It's kind of deep. Are you ready, my dear? Oh, if, if, you, if you were a motorcycle yourself, what motorcycle would you be and Ooh. why? And I don't I just want to hear a Bonnie. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be it. I don't think so. Oh, I, I, I think I know the what? answer, and I think it's in her garage right now. We, we should ask everyone else first. Um. So mm -hmm. let's let's go over the criteria. Is I'm generally I'm older than people think I am. But I like to think I can still cut it in the young crowd. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit overweight. I, I tend to be overweight until I look after myself. But I'm not in bad shape. Um, hmm. I well, think I'm good looking, but not in a classical sense. I'm sort of quirkily good looking. A unique babe, if you will. Yeah. You are good in a pencil no. skirt, though. You know, <laughs> if I seriously, Jim, if I was a bike, I'd be what I was riding yesterday. As yeah. you were talking, that's what I was thinking. Which because, is? you know, because my RF 900, it's, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a vintage bike, but it's as quick as a modern bike. You and have an unnatural lust for that motorcycle. I've seen. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's, yeah. it's, I think it's beautiful. You're so, it, it looks like a leopard. It, I mean, it looks like a, a leopard. It's very, very quirky looking. It's a very, there's nothing else on the road that looks like it. And, you know, there's not many people that look like me. Um, and it can still hang with a young crowd. I mean, I vividly remember when the, the bike shop I worked for, we used to go on group rides. And it was um, me and the service manager was, who was riding an R1. And we'd always be at the front dicing and sort of everybody else would be back there. So, I mean, it can hang with an R1. But like me, it's a little bit prone to being overweight. Um, and th with those colors, it's flashy and outdated. Just like I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I you know I always think that the I'm very much like the mission in San Francisco because, like the mission, I'm, co oh. I'm colorful and loud and not particularly in the greatest taste. And if you catch me at the wrong time of day, I'm quite dangerous. But it, you can also find the best tacos there. Yes, you can. Yes. And you can find the best tacos at Miss Emma's house. So, yeah, that was a great question, Jim. But I think we're on the same page with that. Good. Yeah, I think so. Because, too. I mean, every everybody says, oh, yeah, she wants to be a Triumph Bonneville or a, or a Triumph <laughs> Trident. and Not a BSA. <laughs> no, I love BSA. But <laughs> I'm more likely to have a relationship with those bikes. But, yeah. you know... It's mm. there's there's something about me and that RF nine hundred. We're kindred spirits. Well, you both turn heads. I mean, you notice both of those things. You know, I mean, people see you. You're beautiful, and then the bike, same thing. And it stands oh. out. I mean, we were all those Harleys and the adventure bikes the other day, and the only bike you really saw was that RF. That that thing. That tail light. <laughs> <laughs> it is large. It is large. You know every. <laughs> 
so people have said to me, whenever they follow me on that bike, some mix a lot is going through their head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, oh. I'll tell you what, right. though, real quick, following Good. you what, yesterday, the, uh, the break-free tech light, those things are money. You and Liza both have mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Those, yeah. those things are like one of the safest things going. Yeah, really they're, they're the money. And the thing I like about it is generally safety stuff can look a bit nerdy and hokey. Break free looks cool as hell. Yeah. Especially when you're on an RF 900. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's nice and sort of Tron like without mm -hmm. being, you know, garish. Yeah. Garish. It's yeah. just a really cool piece of kit. Yeah. So, uh, Alex, cheers, mate. Thank you for keeping yeah. me safe Pretty and so. giving me a super cool piece of kit. All right, Emma, I got another one. Yes. This one is from, let's see, Daniel in Little Rock. Daniel! In Arkansas. He says, what color are your knickers? Oh, I don't think that's Oh, God. oh I think that's oh. entirely appropriate. <laughs> Wait, how do it's you a, spell it's nipples? A, it's a lamb. Yeah. No, <laughs> knickers. Knickers. It's, it's a lamb that's vindaloo color. <laughs> <laughs> They're like that's a fine. flag. <laughs> They're kind of yellow in the front and brown and white in the back. No. <laughs> Is that a gradient? <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I wear the same color knickers every day, and they are leopard print. Leopard print, darling. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Spicy. <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> Spicy uh, taco. Yeah, I've got a question. <laughs> Wait, well, I think Rick had his <laughs> oh, Okay. Rick, he just fell out. Okay. Rick down. <laughs> Rick, man out. overboard. Come back, Rick. Man in the rowboat overboard. <laughs> All right, Rick. <laughs> you had, you, Rick, you had a question? Oh, I've got one. No, he just so, fell off his chair, darling. Are you all right? <laughs> It'll grow back. I'm like a starfish, but hairier. Um, okay. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> take that as you will. No. Um, <laughs> so oh I God. have the 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 pleasure, the joy, the, the pain of knowing Emma for a very long time, and there's a photograph that charged my little motorcycle hard up when I was a youngster that I saw of Miss Emma very long time ago on a bike that she had built that was the color orange. Oh, yes. And had the clockwork orange paint on the oil bag, I think it was. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Can you tell me, do you know the picture I'm talking about? There's one of you just sitting on it like in a field and there are bikes fucking everywhere. You're doing something much cooler than I did this week. Were you, were you just having all the fun doing bike event things? What bike was that? Catch me up. Okay, so that bike started as a bet in a pub. <laughs> because, <laughs> no, seriously. So at the time, I was very, very much into... Water buffaloes, or as they say in England, uh, kettles, or GT750s. And I've had a lifelong love affair of these. I've had every single model from the drum brake K right up until the very, very end, the Bs in 78. And it's something I keep coming back to. I have other bikes, and I've, I've said this a thousand times over, my heart's always with British bikes. But I always have a soft spot for GT750s. And at the time, I was riding around on a GT750A that had got very, very cheap from um, uh, the Automobile Association. Um, they, they had an um, auction where they'd auction off wrecked bikes. And I'd pick this thing up very, very cheap because somebody had cartwheeled it on the M25 outside yeah. London. And so I bought it very, very cheap, and I'd kind of straightened everything out, and it rode actually great, but it looked terrible. And we were having a, a, a bet at the pub, and they were saying, you know, you can only really chop Triumphs and Harleys. And I said, no, you can chop anything. And they said, no, you can only chop Harleys and Triumphs and make them look good. And I said, no, you can chop anything and make it look good you've just got to get the proportions right yeah. and they said prove it 
And I said, I will. What do you want me to chop? And they said, that GT750 you're riding, and you've got to keep the radiator. And so I did. And so I chopped the GT750, and I, it, I put a classic hardtail frame on it. I used, like, six-inch over telescopic forks. It was a classic job. It had a 21-inch front wheel which I boosted from a trail bike because it was very much a budget build. So I had this little spool brake drum hub, 21-inch rim. I had a 16-inch out back with like a, a wide glide fender. And I tried to keep the theme of threes because it's a three-cylinder. So I had three round tail lights tucked up inside the clip on the fender. Perfect. It had three gauges, which all matched. It had the Speedo Taco and the Temp gauge. So it was like threes. And the bike itself was called the Clockwork Orange because it was orange. And people always used to say it sounded clockwork. Mm. So I had the, the guy with the big eye and the bowler hat on the oil bag, which was the two-stroke tank, which was actually a lawnmower fuel tank. Wow. And then um, I, I really didn't know what to do about an exhaust system. And... I came across a set of expansion chambers from a sidecar outfit. And back in the early 70s, um, that engine, that Suzuki GT750 engine, was very, very popular with sidecar racers because it was compact and you could make big power with it. But sidecars were very, very low to the ground. So they had these very, very low profile expansion chambers and i got a set of those and i did a little bit of modification to it and so you know i had this like 90 horsepower two-stroke chopper oh, yeah. and it became Obviously. quite famous in the day you know the the picture that was taken was at the very very first um thing called the bulldog bash and the bulldog bash was held just outside stratford upon avon right in the middle of england and the <laughs> There was a new, the, the thing I remember most, and somebody might be able to find this piece of footage. There is a newscaster from BBC standing by the side of the A38, which is the main road running into Stratford-upon-Avon. And the segment was, you know, the bulldog bash, everyone's concerned about the noise. And, you know, there's all these Harleys coming through and the reporter saying, Hyper yes, children. and, you know, there's the, you know, we can hear these motorbikes aloud. And then I just come screaming past with these three expansion chambers with, you know, the baffles missing. So it sounds like a swarm <laughs> of angry bull tacos. And they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> right on cue. Um, and, yeah, we just yeah. used to, you know, stand in a field and listen to bands and take all kinds of chemistry lessons and drink <laughs> beer and have a really groovy time. And this was, gosh, this was the mid-80s. Awesome. Uh, very, yeah, did they very... have these bikes in the 1880s? Yes. Yes. <gasps> they were steam-powered. Um, you know, Isambard Kingdom Brunel taught me everything I know, including how to properly wear a top hat. Mm. <laughs> All right. Important. I have another one, and this one is from oh, Daniel in Little Rock. Uh, Hello, Daniel. Uh, all right, and he says, "What color is your brazier, Daniel?" <laughs> oh, they're not appropriate. <laughs> Always appropriate. And today, like every day, I am wearing my red brazier. Red brazier. Okay. Yes, the red, the red frilly one. Goes very, very well with the uh, leopard printy knickknicks. You know, I'm not the kind of matching bra and knickers kind of gal. You know, I like to mix and match. That throws them off. When it matches, it seems a little pre-thought out. It's a little matchy-matchy, you know? isn't it? It's a little preppy. Yeah. Yeah. It really mm -hmm. is a little preppy. Yeah. Yes. All right. Bagel, you had another one? Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask out of all the places where you could ride, where is the place that you would like to ride the most where you've never ridden before? Oh, gosh. That's a good question because I love riding in America. Um, Spain is an absolute joy to ride in. Mm. I could spend the rest of my life riding around Spain. It's, it's a fantastic place. They seem completely unable to build any grip into their concrete, into their <laughs> asphalt, but that really doesn't matter. 
That's um, why they're all all hard enduro riders over there. Yeah, <laughs> I think based on from what I've seen, Vietnam. Mm. I would love mm. to ride in yeah, Vietnam. Yeah, I agree. Nice. You know, it's just, I mean, I think everyone saw the Top Gear episode where they're all on motorcycles of some description. <laughs> and then I've seen other That's stuff it. from Vietnam, and it just seems the most extraordinarily beautiful country with the most beautiful people in it as well. Because, you know, that all adds to the experience. Because if you're spending all day and all afternoon riding, you know, you want to meet cool people when and you're done. Let's not forget about the snacks you would find on the side of the road. Oh, Holy I mean, crap. Right? Exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, that's a great question, Bagel. I think Vietnam. Now, would you would you do that knowing that you're not able to import any bikes into Vietnam? You'd have oh, to no, I do it on bike. a little bike. I think, okay, excellent. No, I think part of the fun, I think part of the fun of doing it would be on a smaller capacity bike. And yeah. when I think back to that particular Top Gear episode, I think Hammond had the right idea on the Russian army bike. Yeah. yeah. The Russian <laughs> army two stroke. I mean, yeah. it's just perfect. All right, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be any fun. If you were doing it on a gold wing, I think you'd miss part of the experience. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, good one. All right, I got another one. This one is from Liza in Santa Cruz. And this one Yes, says, hello, Liza. Emma, are Cruz. you aware that the chain on your glasses is making a racket against your microphone? Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> These are like real time. This is wild. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. I finally figured out what the sound was. I, we're just going to keep pulling pieces of metal off of her until we figure it out. You know, like I, strip I, the only it. reason I wear this chain is because Jim <laughs> likes me looking like a librarian. Mm -hmm. I sure. do. All right, <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a real question. <laughs> yes. Uh, what does this one, librarian costume look like? This one is from John in Tempe. Hello, and he John. says, is it John um, or Johnny? John. Just John. John, John okay, says, John. Um, I've heard that two strokes are better than a four stroke bike. Yes. All I have is a four-stroke. How do I take two strokes out? Oh, I'm moving. <laughs> I don't know, but when you find out, give me a call, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Removing strokes. Oh, God, I love it. Strokectomy. <laughs> Get it down to one stroke, Emma. <laughs> it's a mighty one. <laughs> a thumper, if you will. Uh, I digress. Oh, God, Rick. <laughs> Rick's down to one stroke. <laughs> I'd never leave the house. <laughs> See, and that's funny because Jim told me, told me the more strokes, the better. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that's all, that's that's all relative. Oh, my God. As long as that's the two-stroke dump, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God oh, almighty. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> I got. I have another one for Emma. I'm just well, kind of okay, curious. Well, we, didn't know, we didn't answer. Oh, you're on this one. I want to hear the answer. Back it's, to the strokes. It's a, it's a fundamentally different principle, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you talking yeah, about, Willis? Yeah, no, Emma. It's just move. suck, squeeze, what? bang, blow. It's the same thing. Oh right? yes. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> but can I? Can I? Can I uh, add a little something to that answer? Yeah. Yes. I know someone, well, I don't know them personally, but I know that someone has actually done that. Taken a four-stroke motor. Oh, you can do it. And turn it into a two-stroke. Yes, there, you can. There is, there is someone who took a Heinkel motor, a four-stroke Heinkel motor, filled in the, the case and created a, uh, a, a, a um, what is it, the, 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 um, it, the port, the port induction in the case, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the transfer cases, right, and and made it into a two-stroke with a two-stroke cylinder on top of it. Now um, listen, and, listen here, Bagel. Yeah, now, I know that's possible. But that that's is possible. An, it's an engineering feat. <laughs> yes. You keep your mutant motor talk out of here. Yes, yes I, exactly. I, 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 I maybe I may be wrong. It was either it was either Germans or or Brit or. British who who did it? I forget who. Oh, but it was Stalin. Could it could have been? It was it was for it was I think it was for drag racing. Um, I could be wrong, but it was it was absolutely insane. 
And, and the lengths that they had to go to convert it to a two-stroke was just, just mind-blowing. You know, and the, those drag racers, they're, they're an interesting bunch. You know, these are big, oh, yeah. burly, hairy men that dress like <laughs> their moms. <laughs> and it's no fun. It's <laughs> no fun. Would mother. you say they <laughs> resemble a hairy starfish? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, it'll only take two strokes then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I see that arm growing back right now. Jim, you were looking for a good band name. I think Harry Starfish is the one. Oh, better than my last one, Poop on the Shovel. <laughs> that's my desert band. We can have a desert. Just, that's just the EP, you know. Keep it as an album title. Okay. All right, yeah, Bagel, you had, you had a question? Oh, no, that, that was it. Okay. Jim, you said you had a question? Yeah, I got one. I might be off base, Emma, but the, I, I always thought that, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be an affinity and we've mentioned it a couple of times tonight oddly enough for suzuki suzuki and yes I'm curious you suzuki. know the water buffalo we go we you know we always thought that that bike down jameson and um the rf yeah. of course and barry sheen you know we both gloat over on a regular basis back and forth but is what is there an attraction to suzuki oh. and why oh yeah oh no absolutely um so, and I mean, bear in mind, this is my opinion. I don't want to upset anybody. I don't want to inflame anybody. And remember, my personal opinions were formed really 40, 45 years ago when the whole superbike movement was taking hold. So if you take the individual manufacturers, um, Honda never made the power, never made the power. They're good bikes, but they never made the power. Kawasaki's made the power, but, you know, some of them were a little bit flashy and some of the quality was a little bit questionable. You know, you'd ride a Kawasaki through an English winter and all the chrome would fall off and the engine would just go crusty white. And the early ones had handling issues too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they were never that common. You know, mm. even back in the late 70s, if you saw an H1 or an H2, it's like, oh, it's one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an uncommon bike that back then. You know, a lot of people were riding Z1s. A lot of people were riding Z650s. You know, these were really common bikes. Um, and great bikes made lots and lots of power. But, mm -hmm. you know, not always the most tasteful. Um, Yamaha... God, they did such a good job of shooting themselves in the foot so many times. Um, you know, they come out with a great concept like the XS 750 triple. And they'd be plagued with so many problems with it. And the XS 11 that just dropped second gears. So mm. that kind of left Suzuki. And Suzuki's were a great alternative because they look great. They were really, really nicely made bikes. They made great power. And it just, I don't know whether it was just the, the crowd I hung out with in Birmingham, but we all had them. Um, we all had GT550s, 380s. A lot of us had 380s. Um, when the GSs came out, the GS550 and the 750 and the 850 with the shaft drive. And they were just frigging brilliant bikes. And when you've been messing about with these things as long as I have, motorcycling is, is just the thrill of motorcycling, but there's a lot of nostalgia thrown in as well. And, you know, I do kind of get a little bit nostalgic for those days when I was a teenager and, you know, I'd hop on my GS11 and just ride to Germany for the weekend. Um, but yeah, I've had a long, long association with Suzuki's and they're just great. Are they perfect? No. You know, Suzuki have had terrible charging systems since the 1970s. Mm. I always joke with people is one day Suzuki will perfect a charging system and nobody <laughs> will know what the hell to do with it. Um, <laughs> and you know, if some of the graphics on the fared bikes, you know, you point a jet wash at it wrong and all the graphics fall off. Mm. But they're 
just they've got a lot of heart those spikes so and, then tell and so what about the barry sheen connection how does that play into that well you know barry sheen um suzuki really just stumbled on that rg500 concept and up until the rg500 which was barry sheen's weapon of choice the weapon of choice was the tr750 which was really a race version of a water buffalo it was three cylinder it had some pretty radical porting and you know big racing carburetors but it was basically a gt750 engine race prepped up and as good an engine as it was suzuki knew that it was it it was going to be beyond its prime very very soon so they came up with this concept very very radical concept of a square four two cylinders in front two cylinders behind twin crankshafts geared together and it made for a very, very compact engine. And then you could do things like rotary valve induction, where the carburetors live down by the crank on the engine. And so you could have this thing that's not much bigger than a bag of groceries that's like 100, 120, 130 horsepower. And it was good enough to propel Barry Sheen to all kinds of victories. It was just the right bike with the right rider. But bear in mind, Barry Sheen was always looking for more power. If you see Barry's very, very late last career bike, it was a Yamaha. He went to Yamaha in, I th- want to say, 81. Well, he's competing even with Kenny, 80. right? Yeah. So he went, he went to Yamaha. So it wasn't, it was, it, he was a, he was fond of big power bikes. And back from 74 75 until 80 when he was absolutely at the top of his game the big power bike was the rg500 suzuki but it just so happens and there we are there he is there he is sitting on his rg500 suzuki number seven right barry look how long his hair is that's a great looking toy (laughs) it is i it was given to me by a very very dear friend thank you jim Cheers. all right um i have another one this one is from jb in orlando <laughs> what's that jb or bj <laughs> or idiot <laughs> jb wants a bj um hello jb uh orlando jb and. says um I love orlando where is the best place on a bike to mount a rocket launcher and he has a <laughs> Honda Rebel, a '97 Rebel 250. Okay, oh. um, I'm going to give him two. I'm going to give him two choices. Okay, I'm going to give him two choices. Um, it needs to be sturdily mounted, and you can mount it pointing forward for when you want to go backwards in a hurry. Or if you point it backwards, you can use it for extra acceleration. Oh, good one. Well, 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 I think he's talking about a rocket launcher, though, not a rocket engine. Yeah, yeah rocket no, launcher. I mean a launcher. Yeah, because when it chucks that rocket yeah. out of there, I mean, it's he's just set it, it up like a mortar. Set yes. it up like a mortar. Just well, you could. You could send right? it up right. Mm. You could send it up directly. Because yeah, you know where it's going to go. That your rebel has enough power to get yourself out of the way. Otherwise, it'll come down on your head. Right. Mount would you mount it? Would and you mount it on top or down low? Or where would you put it? Oh, down low. And just Definitely. curious, on a oh. Honda Rebel, how fast does he have to be going to not come to a complete stop when it fires? Oh, I th- miles an hour. Yes, I think 88 <laughs> miles an hour is the key. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I say you should mount it backwards. Or you could have it on a swivel. So you, could be, firing, you could be firing mortars to help you mm. get up to 88 miles an hour. And then at the crucial moment, you know, the vinegar stroke, as it were... You could reach down and flip it. You could reach down and flip it forward, and then shoot your oh, shell. No. You just you broke Jim. Everybody just spit into their computer. You just, just broke Jim. Jim. Okay, I just killed my nose. I don't even know what. I don't even know what that is. And I lost it. There's two ways to find out. I'm getting a rocket. <laughs> Let me get the one stroke. Hang on. <laughs> that, that would be the one stroke. Make it get the big bore. 
Uh, <laughs> all right. I think uh, do we have time for one more question. Yes, yes, Dolly. Sure. Uh, oh, this is good. And this is from Jody in Washington, D.C. I don't know Hi, Jody. if Jody is a man or a woman. <clears throat> uh, Jody, Jody says... Jody, Jody is a girl's name. Uh, okay. Boy's name, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Jody says, I just got my license I'm, and I'm about to get my first bike. I could use your help in recommending what to get. Good-o. Um, Boosa. So I commute... Stretch Boosa. <laughs> With the sidecar. <laughs> of course. <laughs> And a rocket uh, I commute launcher. in the city in, in Washington, D.C., so a good city bike, but I would also like to be able to load it up with gear and go camping. Um, I have a girlfriend, so I'd like to take a passenger and maybe go on some long trips. I've also always wanted to try some dirt biking, maybe a track day or two, and I've really wanted to try a hill climb. <laughs> <laughs> you need a swift ah, excellent, all ah, excellent ah. ideas. No, I think this is absolutely so fantastic. What would be a good first bike for Jody? Um, I have a recommendation. I would say a Honda CB500X and two sets of wheels. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is, listening to all these things, you know what would actually be a great bike for all of these stretch KLR. Boosa. no i'm, <laughs> I'm thinking of vespa Versus. a vespa for a hill climb well <laughs> you know if think you so. stood on the front <laughs> bonnet and had your hands behind your arse and sat on the headlight <laughs> oh you God. might have a like sat, on, sat on you sat on the front fender and hooked your feet into the floorboards <laughs> maybe <laughs> there we go we could put some bmx pegs on the axles i don't i've got ideas <laughs> yeah, you know, where there's a will, there's a, a rocket way. launcher. I, my my thought was that sounds like the job for a versus. <laughs> Am I yeah, right? Not a well, definitely not on a hill climb. The versus wheelie's too easy. Okay, but for everything else, <laughs> just yeah. strap your bag to the front fender when you're doing the hill climb, and then that's your camping <laughs> gear. See, you can do this. <laughs> no, yeah. it, it, wait, it, wait up front. Strat sounds like a job for a stretch Ooh. booster to me, or stretch versus. How about that? Ooh. Um, yeah, I, I think you go with the, the, the old tried and true like DR650, KLR, you know, KLR, one of those dual sports. Yeah. For Depending on the bike? tires. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, they're dual sports. For, they're not. Can you do two up on one of those? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. And especially if you got like spend a little bit extra dough, get a seat concept seat or something like that. But why not a, a KLR? You can tour on it. You know, if you get 50 50 tires, it'll carve around. You know, and dual sports are great for the city. You can get between traffic. Mm -hmm. You can go over curbs. I think dual sports are great first bikes anyway. Yeah, um, you definitely figure out what you're going to find yourself doing more of, too. If you never play in the dirt and you think it's just a super cool idea, you did it once and it sucks, rad. So get your toe <laughs> out of that water, and there's a whole other thing to be looking at. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Mm -hmm. And um, so, Jody, um, mm -hmm. Write in, let us know what you bought, and um, let us know whether you're a boy or a girl, because I like to get these things right. <laughs> Photos Is it Jody with a Y or Jody E E? Jody with a Y. Mm -hmm. uh, might be a guy. Um, so we mentioned that we had a great ride tooting around, but Jim, you had another uh, great ride the day before, and you had an interesting story. Do you want to share it? Oh, yeah, sure. Um yeah, it was so Friday. I had the day off and I um, haven't been doing a lot of riding lately, but, you know, definitely in the mood to do a lot more now. So took a ride up through the Santa Cruz Mountains. Um, hadn't been up there in a while since the fires. You know, I've yeah. been after the fires, but it been a few months. And I know we had some rain, so I was curious to just kind of check it out, see what everything's doing. And um, it, was, it was quite interesting. You know, you still got to see a lot of fire damage. It's still really bad up there. Um, and you see where, like, there's some been debris flows or basically big mudslides, you know, taking down chunks of mountains. Um, so people are still having a hard time up there, uh, but it's great dual sport riding. You know, it's twisties and all that. Um, they're still doing a lot of work. And I think, well, I don't know how much of this whole story I want you want me to, to, to mention, but you know what they will say, I, I said it last time, but it's always good to stop and say hi to people. Interesting things just seem to happen. You know, I was in the desert, it happened, and I got to see some crazy wildlife stuff. And on this trip, I was in one of the kind of the mountainy side roads, uh, Alba Road, it's what it's caused, called. Because some of the other roads they were doing a lot of work on and you couldn't really get through timely. But uh, 
This one, I'm coming up Alba Road, so it's a twisty mountain road, um, and there's a tree blocking kind of half of the road, but it's coned off. It's safe. You know, it was just laying there, and there was a Ural with a sidecar uh, parked next to it. Um, so I come rolling up, and as I slow down, they went to wave me on like everything was okay, but, you know, I've been riding for a long time, and I'm like, yeah, I'll just stop and say hi and see how it's going. Um, so turned off the bike, and, you know, we kind of made a couple of jokes. And ended up being um, uh, some really nice people. Uh, a guy, I don't know if people do adventure riding, but if you're familiar with advrider.com, um, a guy named Baldy who runs that, uh, that forum, a uh, really cool forum if you have a chance to check it out. Uh, and we just kind of chatted for about 15 or 20 minutes on the side of the road. You know, a few cars would come by, um, but everybody was slowing down because there's a tree halfway in the road. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we parted ways after a, kind of a nice conversation and I went up through the mountains um, down to the coast. They were heading the same general direction. Um, you know, it was cold and wet and rainy. Uh, so I went down to the coast to a little town called Davenport to get some tea and I like a cookie or something. Um, and it was funny as I was coming out with a tea from the Davenport Roadhouse, I think it was, um, and some sweets. I walked out and lo and behold, there's the girl with a sidecar again. <laughs> Um, nice. which was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you want me to tell the whole story, Liza? Yeah. Or? yeah. No, okay, it's, it gets better. It gets oh, better. It was, yeah. So it was kind yeah. of funny. So, um, yeah, so, uh, it was funny to see them out there and I thought, oh, maybe they just, um, I knew they were coming this direction. They were heading up the coast and then back over the hill via Alice's something like that to go back to somewhere over in the Bay area. Um, and I thought they just saw the Africa twin out front, uh, and swung by just to say hi or take a little break. So I walked out with my tea and, and, uh, hey, how's it going? Good, good. And then um, he's like, yeah, we're having a little bit of a problem with the bike. Well, because of um, the advrider.com page uh, that he does, he gets free bikes to ride every now and then for a few months. So he had had both Africa twins, Liza, and we talked a lot about those. Um, and this time he had the Ural with the sidecar and he had his companion with him. And I just, you know, as he's walking over, he says, hey, we're having some problems. Uh, maybe you can come check it out. And I'm like, oh, yeah, a Ural with fuel injection. I'm sure I'm going to be a lot of help. Let me go get a stick to poke it with. Yeah, let me get a butter <laughs> knife from in here. I got it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> with the spark plugs, I'll pee on them. Um, right. <laughs> but anyway, I'm like, hey, you know, I, why not? I was going to come and maybe there's a loose wire. You know, who knows what? So he started describing it was uh, kind of backfiring and losing power coming down the hill um, and then lost power. And the engine light came on as he pulled over to the side. Um, and just lost power with the engine light on um, and wouldn't start originally, but then sat there for a minute. So I don't know, maybe it's charging or something like that, but we went over, turned the key on, light was bright, fired right up, but he was still concerned. Engine light was on. And, and if you're familiar with that stretch of highway one, as you go North, you were pretty much lose cell reception. So, you know, in about 10 or 15 minutes, they're not going to have cell coverage or anything like that. So it's, it's concerning. Um, and it was funny that it was a brand new motorcycle that he got to write reviews on, but uh so we're laughing and kind of looking at it and just wondering if it's okay to, to try to make the trip back. And I said, well, I can always call a friend. Um, and they kind of laughed and laughed. So I sure enough pick up the phone and call Emma. Um, and next thing I know, hello, Jim. <laughs> I'm like, hello, Emma. Hey, and we're just hey, laughing. Now, and they're kind of, you know, they're still kind of messing with the bike and worried about the engine light and stuff. And so I tell him, I say, I got my friend on the on the phone. Well, we can check it out. So tell him what happened. So then, am I right? I got you on the speakerphone. Then I was on speakerphone, and we <laughs> went through it. <laughs> but the, the line of the day was... <laughs> this is the good part. Because Emma was like, so is it fuel injected? Is it carbureted? We're like, carbureted. And she said, oh, God help you if it's Russian fuel injection. <laughs> 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 Which it wasn't. But... Uh, Anyway, I think, um, you know, the, the problem seemed to just sort itself out. Either something was in the gas or an issue with an injector. Um, but, yeah, Emma kind of we, we talked about it for a bit on speakerphone. And, um, and uh, yeah, and Emma just kind of said, well, let's give it a try and head on down the road. So, um, so they did. They fired it up. And I was still drinking my tea. But I told them, I'll, hey, I'll follow you guys. I'll be maybe 10 minutes behind you. They were just heading back up the coast. And I was still in the mood to ride. So, hey, I'll go up the coast. And. So they were going to have lunch at a place about 40 minutes up the road. Um, and I said, hey, as long as, I don't, as long as I don't see you on the side of the road, I'll figure it's all good. So I, I went up to that destination, didn't see him, figured they were good. And then I actually took advantage of some other great riding um, up Gazos Creek and Butano State Park, again, where it was just devastated by the fire. 
Um, you know, things are closed. There's mudslides everywhere. Uh, really wild. But anyway, just back to the point, I think is it, it's always nice mm-hmm. to stop and say hi to people. And I think with yeah. COVID, honestly, I miss that. I mean, I'm not a social person, right? Anybody that knows me, but I, I do miss that a little bit. And motorcycles are great. The, every time it seems like every time I stop and talk to somebody, something kind of cool happens. Um, so that, that was kind of the best part of the story. It's just, you know, just stop and say hi. I, I love that, nice. that you do that and you never know who you're going to meet. And turns out to be somebody who's really cool doing cool stuff. I know, way cooler stuff. than we are, right? I know, right? <laughs> um, I wanted to share something I, I posted on Facebook, but I got a new thing and it's so cool. Yeah. So I finally bucked up and I went and ordered a new seat for the Africa Twin. And I ordered it from our friends at Corbin. Exactly. So you got that um, COVID money, didn't you? <laughs> she got so stimulated. One She's of the COVID things rich. that um, we're fortunate here, uh, being so close, that we can make an appointment and go down to Corbin and have a seat custom made, literally carved to our ass. Um, but I opted not to do that. Because when I was on their website, just trying to figure out like what seat I wanted, um, I discovered that their software that they have on their website, Build a Seat, is so good um, that you can actually you know pick your bike and then you can pick all the different fabrics, pick stitch patterns, pick the piping, pick all the things, and there's so many colors to choose from, and and then it changes the image, and then you can like actually like turn spin the bike around to see it from different angles. And I, I felt that I was able to build exactly what I wanted just by using that. And man, when I'm talking like, so I got a red and blue seat with white piping to match the bike, but I'm talking like there were many reds to choose from and many versions of, of, of red, you know? Um, so I thought that was so cool and how easy it is to custom build your own seat at no additional cost using their, their program on the website. So I did that and I was actually able to get the seat built and delivered to me faster than if I had made an appointment. Wow. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cause they were still a couple of weeks out for appointments. I've done and the appointment thing. That's really cool that the other option works killer. That's well, good to hear the website. And you well, it's really killer. Out. And the other glowing review I have um, is that I was also very impressed with customer service because customer service, they called me, said, well, hey, we got your order. We're just going over it. And we noticed that the seat that you built looks very much like one of the seats that we have on display for your bike, but it's slightly different color red. I wanted to make sure you were trying, you know, if you were trying to get the one in our picture, I said, actually, no, I used your color palette and I matched one a little bit closer to the red in my bike, I feel, than what you had. Uh, but thank you for asking, you know, and and um, I thought that the customer service was very good on following up, giving me all the information, just going over it, checking on stuff. And then when the seat actually arrived, very well packed, um, I installed it and here's the real kicker. Oh. So I, I, I bucked up. I got the heated seat. Oh, nice. <laughs> and and uh, so it's it comes in you know, with a little switch on the side, which I kept playing with yesterday. It was really not cold enough to have a heated <laughs> seat in my ass, <laughs> but I just had to keep You're playing with it, it, right? <clears throat> um, but the thing I was also very impressed with, so on a heated seat, which I've never installed before, you have electrical wiring that you have to attach to your bike. On almost every single thing I've ever installed, you have to tap into wiring somewhere, right? And I was so impressed. I showed it to Emma. They came up with a great solution. A great solution to this. And what it is, is there's a a, a wire connection that comes off of the, the seat. And it basically has the blades of a fuse in in a uh, right angle connector so the blades of the fuse you so you pull the fuse out and you put this connector in to the blades and then it has a little 90 degree thing that the fuse goes into there does that make sense yeah it steals the power like where the fuse is connected 
So you, all yeah. you do is you're plugging it into Fred. the fuse, but then the fuse is in line on that wire. Right. Now, right. the only downside is that you can no longer close the fuse cover box, hmm. but they supply this tiny little like um, shower cap oh, that goes over the whole the thing. Jimmy hat. A little prophylactic. Uh, yeah, yeah like hat. a little shower cap that goes over it to kind of rainproof it. So right. I was impressed with their software. I mean, look, Corbin's been around for a long time. We right. interviewed Corbin. I've been buying Corbin seats, but it's so nice to see the technology has continued to be one of the, I mean, I, I looked at a, every other seat available for my bike. Nobody had a uh, software like this where you could design it and really go to town, customize it at no additional cost. The quality of the seat, the customer service, the <clears throat> solution to wiring it up, Everything I was really impressed with. So hats off to Corbin and what a great seat. I'll back up the customer service. Not that I, I do not promote drinking and operating your motorcycle, but I found myself somewhere after drinking and lost my keys to my motorcycle. Mm. So a cool Corbin feature that was available for my motorcycle, instead of having to use any hardware or screws or anything, you just pop a key in the side, dunk, and the whole thing pops off. Super easy, especially with my Harley that the battery liked to die all the damn time. Yeah, Rick, but I don't know if you know this, you but all of our key, bikes do your that. Your seat is now locked onto your motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know, y'all, this V2N <laughs> world's catching up. I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. Whatever. I thought it was cool, but imagine you lose your key, you're yeah. fucked, or you're sitting there with a drill in the parking lot being yeah. that guy. And so I called Corbin in, in a huff, and I was like, man, I don't know what to do. And the guy was so cool. I got a hold of someone in Hollister. Mm -hmm. They said, hey, call this guy in, at our Florida store. And they gave me his number. I called him. And after a four-minute phone call, and I think one day, I had a key mailed to me. Oh, and they were able, yeah, and, wow. and I had two mailed to me with a brand new keychain. No charge. And I was like, you guys rule. Nice. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, big ups to the Corbin people. They do a great thing. Sweet. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And yesterday's ride was a good test on, uh, on that because on my stock seat, my ass would get sore, which is funny because it's a, a softer seat. But um, this, you know, the Corbin seats are, they're pretty, they feel hard. Yeah. But I also just think about like, I don't know about you guys, but growing up in school, we sat in like wooden chairs for like hours and hours and hours and your ass didn't get tired, right? Um, yeah, it's, well, it's, I mean, you know. Yeah, but don't forget, like, you know, that's Mike's proprietary, you know, foam, whatever it is. Right. And, and you know, the more seat time you get, the more it'll, you know, it'll shape. And it's funny on my, uh, mm -hmm. let's see, because I, I, I got them on a couple of bikes, but on the Africa Twin, it's almost like I've, I've worked two seating positions into it. One is where I'm right up on the tank. <laughs> yeah, like right. you're right up on the tank, kind of riding, you know, through the twisties. And I can lock in there. And then my, all, all the way back, you know, where your butt locks into that wall back there yeah yeah and then and, and that too so over time too it'll it'll you know it molds and but that's the key right the 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 stock seats are mm -hmm. soft and that's why they start to hurt so much you know yeah. these are more firm and blah 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 so yeah but it's a huge improvement yeah uh, Especially the, at your age. the other thing i wanted to just give a, a little feedback on so you guys remember when we had um we talked about quinn helmets with all the sensors in it and everything all right well, they finally came out with the Adventure Helmet, the brand new one, and I, I ordered one, and I got it in. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I can't wait to be a part of the whole Quinn thing as they build out the, the software kitty, in the community and everything. <laughs> Jim, you didn't mute, you silly. Um, but there's an issue with it. Uh -oh. Uh -huh. So uh, there's three things that I require in my helmets. And that is a modular, a flip down sun shield, and an ADV visor. And I just have learned over all the years of writing, these are just the things that I need to be comfortable. And the ADV visor is important to me because where we live on the coast, in the morning when we're heading out, we're heading into the sun. And in the afternoon when we're coming home, we're heading into the sun. And yeah. I use that visor all the time to dip my head down and block the sun. Well, on this one, it has that visor but it's so short that it actually doesn't come mm -hmm. out beyond the brow of the helmet. So if I look up, Ooh. I cannot even see the visor. So what it does mm. is it looks to be cosmetic, but mm. it still catches okay. wind and vibrates. 
Yeah. Oh, geez. Which really kind of That's frustrates me because I have uh, my other helmets that I use have a visor and they will at certain points or certain windshields vibrate. But to me, it's worth it if I have that ability to block the sun. So um, it kind of frustrated me that this is just a cosmetic thing. So I, I may have done something stupid. I don't know. But uh, this is my brand new helmet. And I took a Dremel <laughs> to the visor today. Uh, no. And here's my plan. So I cut two lines, basically uh, about, you know, the sides of the visor above my eyes from the helmet straight out in a straight line. So what I did was um, I took the center of the visor and I'm just sliding it forward an inch and a half. And then I'm going to try and glue it back together and reinforce that seam somehow so that I can have that stick out. Um, I may end up like lo losing it on the first try, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sure. We'll try though. And, and full disclosure, they do provide caps to go. So if you do remove the visor, there are caps to go over the part of the helmet where it attaches, but I want a visor. So I am modifying my brand new helmet and trying to make a better, better visor. Perfect. So we'll Chopper see how shit. it goes. Uh, I think both Jim and I have a lot of glue on our hands right now. Yeah, yeah. I think my skin was sticking better to the visor than the uh, than the actual plastic I know, itself. I know. I know, Jim. I didn't, get there. I didn't tell you. You helped me. Like he he helped me. Like hold it. We're trying to hold it as glue set. And, and I went it. back in to check on it, and I bumped the stool it was sitting on, and the I started to fall and I grabbed it by the visor and oh. snapped off. Oh. Well, I told you, I think you should just drill some holes in it and then zip tie stitch it. You know, like those two stroke guys on the rear fender when it snaps off. Safety wire. Yeah. Just stitch it with zip ties. That's not or a safety wire. wire yeah. Or both. It's not a horrible idea. No, I talked yeah. to Emma about, um, I was going to cut actually <clears throat> a piece of, some strips of fabric, like from a t-shirt. And use epoxy, uh, put it on the bottom and use epoxy, which should be absorbed into the shirt and form a seam that's mm -hmm. reinforced. Well, you need, yeah, you need like Hyper a glass. chemical weld. Yeah, mm -hmm. you need some sort of a chemical weld. You know, I, I was thinking about that, Liza, and I think your key is going to be a combination deal. Yeah. So um, a t shirt's ba basically made out of nylon, which mm -hmm. is, if you want to kind of stretch things, is like a form of plastic. Yeah. And you could mm -hmm. actually use like model glue. Mm -hmm. and well, if, which would melt it. Which is kind of because you want to kind of melt the surfaces mm -hmm. together or at least melt the surface enough that it, it, you know, it's a rough surface for everything to bite into. Um, yeah. T-shirts typically are, are cotton or cotton blends, but if you if you use some sort of a um, rayon, something that is well, well, I don't know about rayon, but but right. but another nylon like other nylon fabric would be good for sure. I was going to so, say there's a plastic glue that I've used before that comes with a powder, and hmm. you kind of build it up. It's like a plastic weld or something, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I've seen that and, before. Yeah, I remember using it when I worked at an auto shop on cars, and we'd have like a door clip break. So you needed something that was kind of gnarly to reinforce yeah. it, put it together. And you could like build little gussets with the powder to reinforce mm. stuff. So you were talking about that, just trying to make sure it doesn't break or bend or yeah. bobble. Like something like that might be cool. And you can kind of build up like a little spider web of that junk under it or something. You yeah, know? that's a good thing. On the bottom of the visor, it's not really visible. Yeah, totally. Put yeah, a big old so booger on that stuff. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got some I got some fiberglass here. We could just get some oh, cardboard and mock up hey. like a big old Donald Duck bill. <laughs> This fiberglass it right in. Three one ever. Yeah, exactly. Well, now, have, have you asked the, the manufacturer if they have uh, other visors that they, they... do not? I did. Mm -hmm. And they don't yeah. have plans to make any other ones. No, but this is the first version of this, so I did give them that feedback. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to just real quick, not spend a lot of time, but I've seen a couple like forums and stuff where people are asking about what helmet everyone wears. This is not, I know that we have a lot of listeners that don't wear helmets, but I've also seen conversations where people were, have always either not worn a helmet or just wore a happy helmet and they're getting older and they're like, you know, I've been thinking about, it. I kind of want to get something a little bit better. Um, yeah. And so I thought, you know what, we never really share what helmets we wear and we've learned a lot of lessons. So 
Uh, I just want to share besides this Quinn, which is new to me, my favorite helmet, which I have two exact same color versions of the same helmet. And they're both sitting on a shelf and I just grab either one uh, is the Scorpion EXO AT950, which is a modular uh, ADV helmet. And they only run mm. like $289. Um, mm. They're pretty pretty affordable. It's comfortable. I like it. I've got my brake free on it. I've got my Senna on it. It's got all the things. How how loud is it though? Because I, I remember I tried out the first Scorpion modular helmet that came out and it was it it was deafeningly loud. I, I took it on one long ride and I took it back to the store and returned it. So uh, something I can tell you about me. I have never met a helmet that didn't fit me and I have never met a helmet that I said that's too loud. I don't know if I just don't notice these things. Hmm. So well, I've it's not on my radar. Yeah, well, that that may be a, a later model from because the first one that I got was probably this is actually the first gen that I wear. And when really? they announced they were discontinuing the first gen, I went and bought a, one on clearance of the same color I have. That's why I have two. Mm. Uh, but okay. I just it's comfortable. I love it. It's my go to. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you guys, uh, Bagel, what what is your go to helmet? Well, the, the helmet that I ended up buying after I tried uh, that that Scorpion was mm -hmm. uh, the Schubert C three. And I've been running that helmet for years now and have been very, very happy with it. So um, modular full face? Yeah, modular full face with this integrated sun visor. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, with the little drop down uh, sun, sun shade. Mm -hmm. um, it does not have the, the duck bill. Um, but my, this is the second C3 that I've owned. Um, both of the ones that I've, I've, I've bought have been in the, the safety, uh, nuclear waste green yellow color which yeah. is horribly ugly but <laughs> infinitely noticeable which to me is more important highly visible yes <laughs> extremely visible <laughs> so um but but my my second one is now really at the end of its life it's i think more than five years old now so i i'm ready to buy another helmet this spring and i think i'm going to go with a schubert e1 which is basically the same thing as a C3, but it has that ADB uh, visor on it, on the, mm -hmm. the duck bill. Cool. Um, I, I have a friend who, who had, had bought one. Uh, she was very happy with it. And um, unfortunately, I don't think they have that available in the same uh, neon color? garish green. <laughs> yeah, they, they have one that's like black with, with the green highlights. So I may end up going with that. Um, I wish they had one that was full high vis green, just because you know I, I like to be visible. So. Might have to find a painter up there. Well, it's possible, <laughs> or put graphics on it. Who knows? Uh, I will have. I will definitely put the uh, the break free on it though, so that will that will certainly help. But uh, that's probably going to be my next helmet this spring. All right, and Jim, I know you've tried a lot of different helmets. What what are you uh, enjoying? Yeah, you know, I've had Scorpions in the past. I like those. I think it's good bang for the buck. I've had Showies. Um, my current street helmet is an HJC, let me see, HJC RPHA 11 Pro. Um, it wasn't terribly expensive, um, but again, it's a good bang for the is buck this helmet. Is a dirt bike helmet? What is it? I'm What's sorry. Done? So, yeah, so the HJC is my street helmet, um, and it's pretty basic. So I don't do any of the internal sun visor stuff. Um, I don't do a a visor for the sun, any of that. My big thing is just weight, you know, the lighter, the better. Cause we're on the bike for hours and hours, man, your shoulders and neck, it takes a toll. So, and I've been real happy with it. So lightweight, good bang for the buck. I think the HJC helmet, um, you know, wouldn't say I would, uh, you know, I might consider other ones next time, but I've liked it. And then dirt bike wise, you know, I was, was running a Fox helmet for a while, but it was kind of heavy. And then I upgraded to uh, an LS2. Um, and I love this helmet. So it's the LS2 subverter. I think you, you called oh, it like my uh, Star Wars storm stormtrooper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but nice. I like the LS2 a lot. You know, it's super light, um, tons of visibility, um, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the one kind of I'll, I'll say the one helmet I'm not stoked on, and I'm kind of bummed on is the uh, the climb the climb um, cryos I think it's called. Yeah. So it's the mm -hmm. their adventure helmet, right? And yeah. it looks cool. Again, super lightweight. I like the look. It has um, a sun visor and stuff. But um, the one thing I noticed, the sun visor, for me at least, you know, that's a lot of drag. Um, so I don't wear it that often on long rides. Mm. And it was my cold weather dirt bike helmet. So if it's really cold, it had like a face shield. So it helped keep you warm instead of goggles. 
but it's not that often. So I tried it in the desert last time because you're supposed to be able to remove the face shield and put dirt bike goggles, you know, in the helmet. And I tried it. Um, but unfortunately the goggles didn't really seat well in the helmet. They kind of stuck mm. out away from your face a tiny bit. So that was kind of a big bummer. Um, but I really liked it for a, you know, full face, you know, with a face shield, but that was kind of a letdown. Yeah. And, and that's a really good point that you made earlier, Jim, about how, uh, the, the weight of the helmet makes a big difference. Um, that is one thing about the Schubert, uh, at least the, the C3 that I've owned. It, it is a fairly heavy helmet. It's, I think it's about about four pounds or so, um, and it does it does fatigue your your neck a bit more. But if you ride with it frequently, you build up the muscle strength to to accommodate it. So you know, yeah. so if you ride if you ride often enough, it's not a big right. deal. You get used to it. It works out, yeah. Good to know. And the last thing I'll add for all my helmets is a pin lock. Um, so if you mm. deal with any fogging at all, yes. I mean, I, it, pin locks, yeah, way to go. Yeah, it's great. Right. Rick, what do you wear? Uh, I've got, so my life's funny. No, um, <laughs> oh, so no. I work, I do work at a motorcycle shop and I do occasionally have to do test rides. Mm -hmm. So being conscious of that, I kind of run a two helmet life. I got my work helmet, my home helmet. Mm -hmm. So my work helmet that I love the hell out of is a few year old discontinued color of a bell modular SRT. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. it's a really simple, basic, basic modular Flip down sunshade, like you were saying, Liza. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of vents, real simple features, and it's nothing too wild. I kind of got it really cheap and just out of necessity, but I started falling in love with it. Wearing glasses and having a modular, I mean, y'all know yeah. the deal. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially doing test rides on motorcycles, and for me, yep. not being so familiar with some of the and stuff. Oh. I was a Harley dude. So there's yeah. some new racket I'm listening for, you know, different sounds. I love being able to rip the top up of that right. thing and roll up to a stop and go, oh, yep, that's that rotor doing that stupid thing or whatever, being mm -hmm. able to catch it. So that's my work helmet. Um, I enjoyed it so much. I bought a play helmet that was a bell. Mm. Um, I've done that is a chrome helmet. That's a chrome dome, son. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. That is right? so that's so slick. We were talking visibility, and I was joking. I was like, white helmets always seem to work pretty good. And I was like, let me see what loud-ass mm -hmm. colors we got. But this was a discontinued, they called it smoked chrome, I think. Hmm. And this is their, oh, Lord, now I'm an idiot. What's this one called? The Eliminator, I think. It's their new one. Do, do, do. Yeah, this is the Eliminator. So I've done the Simpson Outlaws and the Bandits and all those that look super cool, have no vents, and weigh 900 pounds. Um, <laughs> all right, if, if Jim looks like a stormtrooper, you look like a Cylon with that. <laughs> <I'll tell you. laughs> See, Jim, we need to get together yeah. now. <laughs> but um i really like the bell helmets i like the quality i like that it was uh you know keeping it kind of local being up in the mountains up there you know yeah that it um for my daily helmet these eliminators do not have a lot of features like the vents, I don't know if you guys can see, are just a bunch of punched holes in the top. <laughs> you can get this like plug plate that they make. They're hair plugs. No, um, you can get this thing that could chunks into it to shut them up. But like, I don't know, man. For me, it was fine. I wasn't tripping about it. The weight was nice on it, and it worked a okay. All right, good one. All right, Miss Emma. Hello, darling. Well, you know, I. I also have a complicated life because I suffer terribly from claustrophobia. Yeah. So yeah. I like my open face helmet and it's, it's a true open face, but it's got some features to it. It's got the drop down visor, um, which I like in yellow because we're always stuck with fog here in Monterey. Hmm. And I've got it loaded up with my brake free and then I've got my intercom on it, which never works with the boom oh. mic. And it's an LS2. However, I do, and I like the LS2. It's, um, it's a Chinese-made helmet, but they're very, very good quality. And the lightweight, the graphics really pop. It's a, it's a nice helmet. It's a quality helmet. And I like the idea, like a lot of women, I tend to wear a great deal of makeup. And I like the idea that I can dismantle the inside very, very quickly and throw everything in the washing machine and get all my fucking foundation off it and then reassemble yeah. it. Um, 
and it's it's just a neat helmet. It carries all my accessories very well, but it's noisy. And if you remember that 100 mile an hour dash that you and me had coming back from L.A., mm -hmm. um, my ear protection wasn't as good as it should be. And I had tinnitus for three days after that mm. trip. Oof. So Yikes. it was, yeah, I was getting, you know, by day three, I was getting a little worried that I might have done permanent damage to my hearing. Mm. But, you know, it gradually just went away. Um, you know, and I I've, sorry, Jim. Yeah. I was going to say something about the LS the LS two uh, helmets again. Uh, my dirt bike helmet. I mentioned that, wanted to mention this earlier, but you know I got it because it was light. But the other interesting thing I thought it's DOT and ECE approved. Um, oh yeah, for a dirt for a dirt bike helmet, right? And this yeah. wasn't a horribly expensive helmet. Um, so I, yeah. I, I dig those helmets. Those LS two helmets, I'm a big fan of. Well, you know, I mean, the, the, the Chinese manufacturer, the, I think their attitude was, we don't know what the market is going to be for these. So let's just present them everywhere for their safety you know, certification process, which is why you're getting all these goofy ACU and God knows what certifications on it. But it's a very, very high quality product. I'm happy with it. And I do actually have a full face helmet. Um for that odd occasion when I want to go really, really, really fast. Um, and it's a bell. And it's it's an entry-level bell. It's a couple of hundred dollar bell. Mm -hmm. um, I've always liked bells, going back to the Bell Stars of the 1970s. I think I learned you know, it from watching that was you that, on TM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, the bell for the longest time was the helmet to have. Yeah, there were the, there were two in England. The serious riders either had what was called a Griffin Clubman, which was a very expensive handmade English helmet, beautifully laid fiberglass, but weighed about a gazillion tons, or the Bell Star, which is an American helmet. So there you go. LS two. And I want to mention that that was a really good point that you made, uh, Emma, about having a removable liner. Uh, because even if you don't wear lots of foundation, if you ride a lot, especially in the summer, you sweat you sweaty. Your helmet. And, and your helmet liner gets really funky. So being able to, to pull that out and throw it in the wash and get it nice and clean, put it back oh. in for to ride again. It's oh, like it's, such, it's such a difference. Underwear. Yeah. <laughs> right, because the first first couple of helmets I had didn't have removable liners, and and after like a year or two, I mean, it was like unbearable to like even. They get right nasty. It. Yeah, because you're so, in a fishbowl of your own funk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so being able, I mean, to we're all smelling liner. our helmets now. <laughs> <laughs> it smells, it smells like a shoe. <laughs> A there really big shoe. Yes. <laughs> Those are the, the misfit helmets. Uh, we all have different things that we want that we that are important to us. So I thought it was good to share. Yeah. Um, I got time for some emails and we got some good ones. So I want to make sure we get these. Uh, <clears throat> this one is from Daniel. And he says, I heard mentioned that in a previous episode, y'all talked about the history. <laughs> is this the same Daniel who was asking yeah. me about my nicknicks of <laughs> my Brazil? <laughs> I got a lot to say. I like I'm it. not sure. I heard a rumor in a previous episode that Emma wore leopard print under the knickers. <laughs> uh, that he said he said that y'all talked about the history of the CB750. That was yes. my first motorcycle, and I'd be interested to know what episode that was in so I can hear about it. And that was episode 320 when we interviewed Wendy Crockett. Um, he says, I love your history segments. I'd listen to Emma talk motorcycle history all day. I also oh, want to say you, Daniel. I will, I, that he loves the games that Liza comes up with. His current Valentine is Jen, a 2020 Honda Fury named after a popular actress. It's his uh, first new bike, and he just recently finished the valve gap check adjustment. That was a challenge as it was my first time doing that task at all. I find it odd that I was doing valve adjustment on a moto made in 2020, but it was satisfying when she fired up and didn't tick like an old farm truck or blow up. Excellent. If anyone wonders, this is a deceptively well handling bike. Remember, Jim, we were just looking at the, no, it wasn't with you. I was with John Liotti and I was telling him about the Fury. A lot of people don't know the, the Honda Chopper, right? 
-hmm. He says it's uh, deceptively well handling. Granted, I'm no professional. I've only ridden a CB750 and a DRZ400, but I can scrape peg to peg with satisfying results. The instant torque from the shaft drive is fun too. The only beef I have with her is the 120 miles before she's thirsty again. I'll probably just have to hang 40 gas bottles off her long, luscious frame if I ever have to go for a distance. I wonder what your favorite. Well, yeah, I'm going to stop you there. I'm yeah. going to stop you there because Jim was, was it you, Jim, who was complaining about the relationship I was having with my RF 900? No, I don't think so. Complaining in what sense? No, I think somebody was saying that I have quite an obsessive relationship oh, right. with my RF. That was Rick. That was yeah. Rick. Yeah. Yeah. That was Rick. No, I think, I think Daniel is having a very motorcycle. <laughs> Motosexual relationship with his furry fury. <laughs> fury. <laughs> well, well, I want to say it is always possible to install a spare tank. Uh, if you yep. put a top case on it, you know, put a spare. Can't tank put a top there. case on a fury. Well, I, I don't know but what fury looks like. You but. could put a, um, like a, a what do you call it, the fork ba- fork bag? Yeah. Like yes. You could put a tank in a leather fork bag. Right. I tell you what. I tell you mm. what. It looked brilliant on it. I tell you what. Looked brilliant mm. on and it. And wrap it in a Mexican is, blanket. <laughs> is um <laughs> no because it's 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 chopper, but yeah. it's got a kind of edgy look about it. You could get somebody to fabricate like a belly pan, almost like a spoiler that goes mm. down at the bottom of the frame. I've seen them yeah. used for oil before. Yeah. Yeah, and you could you could pump it in as you know, you could get a couple of gallons down there. You know the old mm. chin spoiler? Yes. Mm. I've seen some look- old chopper stuff. Dick Allen would run these sissy bars that had what looked like a mini keg that I would guess mm-hmm. maybe a two and a half gallon little pony keg. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. on the sissy bar, top of the fender. But that's your way. And it just had one line running up. Yep. yep. All right. So he- but yeah, that's I, I like the carrying fuel. That's easier, probably. So, <laughs> he, or just put a bigger tank on it. He has a question. He says, "I wonder what your favorite trick is to pull the plastic cover out on Hondas." I busted one of my head covers, not totally, but they're sixty bucks to replace, and I'd like right. to not do that again. Yes, you would. Okay, so there's mm. two things, Daniel. You need to make sure of. You need to make sure that. The rubber is in good condition. Now, this is a new bike, so the rubber's not going to be in bad condition. But it's very, very important, whether it's a cylinder head cover, whether it's a side panel, it doesn't matter, or a fairing. You've got to pull it directly out. Mm -hmm. When I say that, don't pull it at an angle. So understand where the lugs are and where the rubber grommets are. And don't pull it up 45 degrees or 10 degrees. Pull it directly out, which means on the Fury, you pull it towards you, pop. Because if you're kind of trying to Mm -hmm. kind of mess around and pull it at an angle under the tank, you're going to break a lug off. If you pull it directly towards you, there's no side loading on that lug and you won't break it off. That's it. It's as simple as that. And eventually the rubbers will go kind of hard and kind of nasty. And that's when you start breaking off the lugs because the rubber gets so hard. But on a 2020 bike, that's not on the cards yet. My guess is, Daniel, you were kind of because you're under the fuel tank there. And I know space is limited. And maybe you were pulling it at a bit of an angle, either up or down or kind of favoring one side or the other, but you weren't pulling it straight. Now you've had the covers off, you know exactly where the lugs are, you know exactly where the rubbers are, just make sure you pull it straight out. All right, there there you go. go. Um, All right, I got another one here, and while I'm reading that bagel, I've emailed one to you that needs to be read in an accent. Mm, All right. All right, oh, this is good. This is from uh, Brian, who's a new listener. Hello, Hello, Brian. Been listening for some time. I've been riding dirt since I was nine. Rode for some time on the road on an 83 Suzuki GS550 ES. Actually had two. The first one was in an accident and I totaled it. Not my fault. A young girl 
girl pulled out in front of me, rode the second one for some time after until my son was born. 20 some odd years later, I now have three bikes and recently bought a 1983 TT 600 uh, Yamaha. Ooh, Working well, on getting nice it line. road ready currently. This thing is definitely a big thumper. So he also has an 82 Suzuki RS-175, uh, a 93 Yamaha RT-180, and then the 83 Yamaha TT-600. Uh, also, a uh, 79 Suzuki RS-100 rolling chassis that he's looking for an engine. Says, love listening to the podcast. Keep up what you're doing. Wow, that Good is chance. quite quite the collection of vintage bikes but they're all bikes you can ride that's something i love about yeah a bike that you can just ride nice yes all right bagel did you get the email yes okay I, i've got an email here from dan talbot from <laughs> bustleton western australia there it is there it is <laughs> bustleton? yes bustleton yeah. and uh dan writes <laughs> hi gang <laughs> I enjoy your piece on Eggly motorcycles this week, and I think Emma would be interested in my Eggly Trident special. Oh. And uh, he says there's there's also a bit there about a Rocket Three restoration I'm working on at the moment too. When you mentioned the honeycomb backbone by the Australian, I think you're referring to Terry Prince, who is an expat Englishman living in Australia, who, by the way, built my Rapide. Terry worked with Fritz and used to travel to England to source the Vincent engines for the specials. After coming to Australia, Terry began producing his own Eggly style frames with cantilever rear suspension. They were essentially a modern motorcycle, marketed first a TPV, then RTV, which had a limited run of about four or five machines. Regards, Dan. And he also oh, sent geez, a link. Dan. Yes, and he also sent a link to his uh, his project page, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So hopefully Eliza can forward that on to you, Emma, because I think you might be. Yeah, I'd love to see that. that. And perhaps we could, sh we could share it, share it on the website so everybody can have a look in because yeah. um, he's, he's been in touch with me in the past, you know, and he, he's always got lots of interesting things going on. Very but, cool. Yeah. And look, looking at know, the pictures on there. Yeah. That, that is a really cool looking frame. <laughs> and you know, Honestly, Bagel, listening to you, it, it just made me want to cuddle a wombat or something. I mean, <laughs> like smear a wombat in some Vegemite and just you know, curl up the fire. You know, that kind of look at Bagel with that, with that full beard. He yeah. does look like, a bit like a cuddly wombat, doesn't he? What you actually... What you want, Bagel, is if, if, if you get, like, a cowboy hat yeah, the and you hat. kind of... And you Flip kind of flat, up. <laughs> no, you kind of flatten the brim and then yeah. get corks on little bits of string and hang them all around it. You'd oh look very God. Australian, darling. You'd look very oh Australian. God. <laughs> <laughs> You'd call that a hat. <laughs> That's <laughs> not a hat. Bloody. That's a bloody hat. <laughs> this is a hat. <laughs> <laughs> No, good job right. with the accent. No, good job with the accent. And thank you, Dan, for the email. Yeah, thank yes. you so much for everyone who uh, sent in emails this week. Um, just a reminder, everyone, go ahead and send us your emails, recyclemotorcyclegarage at gmail.com. We try to get to them all. We don't always, um, but we do appreciate them. And also a big thanks to everyone who did some reviews again on um, iTunes. Thank you so much. Keep them coming. Uh, help get the word out we really need some help there's so many new motorcycle podcasts you guys we're still just kind of clamoring to keep our place here but mm. well you know help when, spread you the listen, word. when you listen to us it's it we're like cornflakes darling with the original and best we're original and best um oh uh, wait so, i thought uh, were supposed to stop you from masturbating <laughs> <laughs> wait I thought you could make a gasket out of the box. Why not both? Wait, there's something there. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it. Oh, my gosh. What, what was the name of that movie, by the way? Not work. Okay. Uh, that is look, really look up the history of Kellogg's. Yeah, look it up. Oh, my God. I'm, even made a movie about it. I thought you were going there. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Also, just a reminder. Hey, if you'd like to enter our contest, write a poem yes. or a song, send it to Recycle Motorcycle Garage at Gmail. Or a haiku. Or, or a haiku. Or, or a limerick. limerick. Or a limerick. Yes. Oh, yeah. I got a limerick coming your way. Don't worry. Or, or write okay. an iambic pentameter, if you like. Ooh. <laughs> Exactly. Whatever floats your boat. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Liza. Where can those? Where can a lovely, delightful, musically or poetically gifted listeners send those submissions to? Recycle Motorcycle Garage at gmail dot com. And again, the deadline. What did I say? Uh, March seventh, I believe. So two March seventh. So we're giving you two weeks. Two weeks to come up with your best. And you know, I want to make. I want to make sure people understand these things don't actually need to be good because <laughs> they, no, they don't need to be good. So if you think, Oh, I'm not going to send it in because this is terrible and feeble and immature. We'll love it. We think it'll oh, yeah. be brilliant. We're perfect. Immature, you know? immature goes a long way here. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, so, and yeah, and Emma's going to be one of the judges here. So uh, yeah, if you do, sing off, Pitch. It doesn't matter. I mean, for God's sake, her favorite band is the Smiths, so it's a pretty. <laughs> <laughs> She's obviously deaf. I mean, so... <laughs> how can you love the Smiths? Morrissey's like allergic to California. He's never given you anything. <laughs> well, Morrissey's allergic to everything, isn't he? Has he canceled <laughs> more gigs than he's played? Oh, I oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Anyway, oh my. so I think that brings us, you know, around to the end where we say thank you to everyone uh, for listening and being with us and being a misfit. But also, you know, thank you to our listeners in Texas for sticking with us and, and still being here. I'm so glad. Yes. And thank you to those Harley riders who waved at us because it made it made my day. It, it really, really made my day as well. And, uh, you know, thank you to just our Patreon subscribers, uh, everybody. Um, I just, I, I'm feeling thankful, if you didn't realize, because like I said at the beginning, I feel like a bit of hope, you know, like not necessarily things getting back to normal, but things getting back to, to right, closer to right. Does that make sense? Back to better. Mm, well, yeah. Eventually, yeah. Just the things feeling right, and again, having all the people at the garage today, even though we're all being safe and and social distancing, yeah. it just felt it felt right. It was nice. So I hope other people are feeling that. There's warm weather coming across. People keep hanging on, hanging on there. Winter is about to end. Bikes are coming out. Buell is back. There's a lot of things to look forward to. So that's kind of I think the message tonight um and also if you would like to ask miss emma a question you know where to send it um we already got her knickers covered so <laughs> <We did. laughs> that's, that's covered we got a brazier uh, covered too correct uh, yeah, yes got that okay. covered yes covered with vegemite darling <laughs> oh i didn't ask hey emma i i have a question i, I hope it's not too late i want to know what brand uh do you use to keep your dentures in uh uh i use i use gorilla glue darling <laughs> gorilla glue <laughs> here it works never, wonders it never fails <laughs> yeah exactly yes it's no, only it's, gotta work once <laughs> yeah, exactly that's it you know, I gorilla glued the buggers in 30 years ago and haven't shifted <laughs> since. Draw the line. Here we are. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, All right. God. I think we're ready to get out of here. Thank you, everyone, for listening. This is Liza. Bagel. I'm uh, Rick. Uh, <laughs> Emma, darling. <laughs> Make it, Jim. <laughs> And we are out of here. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. cool, cool. <laughs> Has that ever gone smoothly, ever, in like eight once. years? It once. Once. I I it. No, but you once, see... The, once since the pandemic. 